Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have two different things to work on. First one is to unbox the seeds that I just recently ordered. And second thing, I have my current seed hoard sitting just to the right of me. It's a complete disaster from this last growing season. Things are just all askew. I mean, we've got some work to do. We're gonna organize it, put it in my inventory spreadsheet. If you wanna skip forward to that part of the video, we'll put the time signature on the screen. I'll be talking about the types of tub I like to use. My seed collection, it expands and contracts rapidly. So I have to have a system that can accommodate that. I'll also show you my Google Sheet. That's how I organize what I do have, which is so handy. So that when I am getting ready to push you know, place order late at night. It's a product of one of those late night orders. Uh, I can bring up my inventory sheet and I know exactly what I have so I don't accidentally duplicate the order or order too many or, you know, whatever the case may be. But first, let's get into this box right here. I can't remember exactly how many varieties I ordered, but several, and I'm super excited about it. Oh good, I've got a list right here too. Oh my. Let's see how many pages it is. One, two, three, four, four pager. Not too bad, could be worse. And you guys, this video is not sponsored. Um, I ordered all of these and paid just normal price for them. Uh, the places I get my seeds most often, I get whatever I can down at my parents' garden center first. They have bulk seeds. They have seeds that do really well in our area. They tried and tested and um, that sort of thing. They do have a website, andrewseed.com, where they do uh, sell some of those online. Uh, my next go-to is Johnny Seeds. I order a ton of their seeds. And one of the reasons why I like them so much is that, I mean, their packaging is nothing to write home about. There's no pictures, which I know that's huge for a lot of you guys. But for me, it's the information on the back. I mean, it's been an invaluable resource, so much information. It talks about like life cycle uses, the culture, um, how exactly how to um, start these seeds, whether or not you know, you're doing it inside or outside, it tells you when to do it, what temperatures germination is best at, and what to do once they start growing. Um, the germination information, light soil requirements, spacing, harvest, and so on and so forth. It might vary a little bit depending on variety, but I've just found them to be such an amazing resource for information uh, for me. It's been really helpful. Um, I've also ordered from, uh, boy, Florette, I've ordered from Eden Brothers, Baker Creek, which is I think rareseeds.com. Those are usually like for odd ball varieties or things that I can't get. Johnny's has really good prices too, so I, I feel like. Anyway, let's go through these really quick. First bunch of seeds here. I've got some, I think these might all be sunflowers. Oh no, not all of them. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do so that I'm not jumping all over the place? Let me organize these based on variety because I know that, or based on category. I know I've got several different types of sunflower. Hold on, just one second. Okay, I think I've got these all organized. I did have to pull some out because they're actually gifts for some people in my life. So I wanted to make sure to get those separated. Uh, my biggest category that I ordered are sunflowers, which I do know I have some of these in my current stash, um, but I wanted to make sure I had enough and it's possible we might be planting more of things um, this year. And I don't know what we're gonna do with the new property. We're still undecided with that, but I kind of wanted to be prepared to do a little something uh, if we decide to go for it, I guess. But um, sunflowers, so pro cut plum sunflowers, they grow like four to five feet, five to six feet tall. And they're a single blooming, like a single stem sunflower, but they are the earliest blooming sunflower I have ever grown. They're always blooming before any other sunflower that I have other than like the, the little um, Sun Credibles or the, the Saturn Sun Credible sunflowers. And those are more, you know, small and more like container annuals and in ground annuals, I guess. I don't really grow them for cutting as much. Uh, but anyway, the plum are just the most gorgeous color. They're kind of a creamy yellow. We'll put pictures up for all of these. Sorry, Ken, <laughs> I know that's a lot of work, but uh, picture is better than I could ever explain the color, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And even though they only produce one sunflower per stem, they're absolutely worth growing and uh, they don't have pollen. So they're not gonna drop pollen all over you know, your surface. So if you're making a bouquet for somebody else, um, or if you're growing flowers to cut and give away or sell or whatever the case may be, they're a really clean one. In that same line, we've got Pro Cut Gold Light. This one also grows just over five feet, does not have pollen, but it's got a really interesting center. So gold petals around the outside, and then as you go in, it's still kind of gold, but then you've got a chartreuse green center. It's just a really beautiful flower. And then we've got the Pro Cut, let me find it, White Light. 
So again, same size, five to six feet. You've got the white uh, petals on the outside, but kind of a creamy white center, beautiful. And the Pro Cut White Knight. So the difference is you have the creamy white petals along the outside, but in the white night, you have the dark black center. Instead of with the white light, you have the creamy colored center. Then we have a variety called buttercream, which is a little bit shorter. Um, and this one is a branching sunflower, so you get more flowers per stem. Sometimes they're a little bit harder to cut because the stems are various lengths. Uh, most of the time you can get quite a number of really good ones though cut. And this one is a little bit different than the white night. Like they look similar color wise. You've got that buttery, creamy white petal, but these have a little bit longer of a petal. It's not quite as broad of a flower. You know, the white nights stick out a little bit broader and more flat. This one has a little bit more of a forward appearance, longer petals, a little bit smaller of a flower. Then we have a variety called lemonade, which I don't think I grew this year. I grew it last year and it was my favorite one out in the cut flower garden. Now these do have, these are branching, have multiple flowers per stem. They do have pollen. As far as I can remember, they did drop pollen when I cut them. Um, so I didn't put them on inside surfaces that, you know, I didn't want to have messy. I used them a lot outside and in our sun porch area, that kind of thing. But big flowers and they are the most fluffy flowers you'll ever see. They're kind of like the, what, what is it called? Gold light. Um, in that they're yellow and then the center is chartreuse green, except for they're super fluffy. They're really pretty. So the next one is Big Smile, which they're a dwarf sunflower. In containers, they usually stay between 10 and 15 inches tall. And in the landscape, about one to two feet tall. They have about six inch diameter flowers, very classic sunflower bloom, the yellow with the dark center. I thought it would be fun to have one that stays that small because maybe we could tuck it into the edge of a border somewhere. Um, a really easy way to get like really big color through the season for a really inexpensive price, really. Sunflowers are so easy to grow. They don't want to have their soil amended. They don't want any fertilizer. They just want you to plant them, keep them watered until they're up. And once they have established, their roots have established, they don't take as much water either. Chocolat is a new variety and this one grows pretty tall, what's 64 inches, a little over five feet to a little over 76 inches. Uh, but these are a chocolate and gold bicolor. They don't have pollen and they are branching sunflowers. So they create multiple blooms per stem, but each stem is usually, it ranges from one to two feet. So really good for cutting. I'm excited for this one. I feel like whenever I plant sunflowers, I'm always typically harvesting them like late summer, mid to late summer, and then into the fall. And they are perfect in the autumn hues, just so pretty. Then we have Sunbright, which is a five to six foot sunflower. It is a single stem. This one has about six inch blooms, four to six inches, I think somewhere in that range, which makes them really easy for if you're working with, with them in bouquets. The great big sunflowers, they can be a little bit hard to work with. Uh, I don't tend to like to work with huge flowers, even like the dinner plate dahlias. They're pretty in the field. They're pretty out in the garden. And you know, you can make some pretty arrangements with them, but it doesn't make them easy to work with. They are just so big and kind of cumbersome flowers that it can be hard. So this one, four to six inch flowers, they have nice rigid stems. So um, yeah, they're a good one. And then Summer Provence, which is right around that six foot size again. Um, these have six inch flowers on them. They kind of have that classic look to them. They look kind of similar to the Sunbright. They're both single stems. They're both pollenless. Most of these are pollenless that I've showed you today except for maybe the lemonade. Maybe I should look that one up. If, if I'm not remembering that right, I wanna make sure I correct that. Cause having a uh, pollenless sunflower is huge when you're using them for cutting. Produces minimal pollen, pollen is what it says. So a little bit on that one. So that's it on the sunflower varieties. Then we've got some straw flowers. And I didn't grow any straw flowers this year because the last, the year before, I actually got quite a number of them out in the garden, but I didn't have the watering situation figured out. They got way too much. The plants looked like junk, but the blooms looked really good. So I still even have baskets of the blooms because I just popped them off right below the bloom and then I let them dry. And I've used them here and there in projects, but I wanted to expand the colors. And now that I feel like I've got a little bit of time under my belt with that, that new flower garden out there. Um, maybe we can readjust the water and put maybe like the straw flowers. There's a couple others. I don't know if they're in this mix or not. There's a couple other flowers like the gonfrina doesn't need a ton of water. Um, the asters, China asters, I always give them too much water. So anyway, it's an ever evolving system and I'm always learning new things and trying new things out. So straw flowers, we have apricot peach mix, which apricot peach, some of my favorite colors to grow out in the garden, vintage white, We've got purple red 
and raspberry rose and these range these are big like they get over three feet tall um, these will all be ones that i start six to eight weeks before our last frost so these will be going in the greenhouse um, in trays for a little while before we plant them out i did order one variety of gomfrina i have a a, a love hate with gomfrina they're so easy to grow they're so hard to pick <laughs> For me, they're hard to pick. And maybe I'm, I'm being too selective. Maybe I need to take more of the branch out. Uh, but this one's called raspberry cream. It grows a little over two feet tall. Uh, I have grown truffula pink, which is uh, a proven winners. And it grows really, really well. It has an odor to me though. Um, I've heard people, like mixed results on that. Some people say they can smell it. Some people say they can't. When I plant it in mass, I can absolutely smell it. Um, so don't tend to like to use that one in arrangements as much. So we'll see with this one. First year out there, I did grow white and I grew, um, I'm trying to remember the other colors I had out there. It feels like ages ago that I planted the, the first cut flower garden, but it's only two years ago. Um, anyway, raspberry cream looked like a really pretty one. I do have a couple of different types of lettuce because I'm going to be growing these in the greenhouse here very soon. We've got um, an iceberg lettuce. We, it's called Crispino. We eat a lot of that because we do a lot of um, like hamburgers and sandwiches and tacos and stuff like that. And it's just so easy to cut up and the kids like it. Um, so anyway, that one. And then we've got a butterhead lettuce, which we do eat a lot of as well called Casey. Uh, both of these are like right around 55, 57 day. It might be a little bit different inside. One of these is more suited for greenhouse growing. And I think I specifically selected it for that. Well, it says the Crispino is a high percentage of perfect heads, even when grown in less than ideal, warm and humid conditions, which is what they're gonna get in the greenhouse for sure, because it's a little bit harder to control things and I'm still learning too on that. Butterhead called Casey. It says this is a new variety. Yeah, it says it has a better heat tolerance in controlled uh, environment systems, tip burn tolerant, strong root system, glossy medium head heads, so um, medium green heads. Anyway, we'll see how those do. I've got Sunball Crespedia, which is a super easy one to start from seed. That one has to be started before you plant it out. Uh, it takes them a little while to get going, but once they do, oh my goodness, they just take off. And they are very small, kind of like the Lysianthus. When I put them out, they're usually a smaller size plant, but once they hit that soil and they get the outside temperature and the sunshine and all of that, they just explode. And I, now, now I don't have color on them because we have snow outside, but I had color on these right up until the snow. I mean, right up until the very first part of December. So uh, a really a huge fan of this one. Also a more drought tolerant one, doesn't need a whole bunch of water. We've got more mahogany splendor hibiscus. It's one I like to grow every season. Super easy to start from seed. Again, when you start in the greenhouse or under grow lights somewhere, um, six to eight weeks before you plant them out and they grow massive. They also like this year, they were about this big when I planted them out in the garden. And then by the end, I mean, they're mass massive, 40 to 70 inches tall. They look like a red Japanese maple, but they can take full sun. They can take our wind. They are an annual here, which is sort of a bummer, but it's kind of fun to be able to change up where you have that bulk and that color. Uh, you can try it in one area one year, as so long as there's sun, it does like full sun. Uh, and if you do like that color, then you can maybe select something that has that same kind of shape and color for that area that's more of a perennial or a shrub. Um, it's so fun to experiment with annuals that way and then you can decide like remember when I tried to do the moon garden on the west side and I did all annuals the first year just to see if I liked it and found out that I didn't like it there love moon gardens just not right there it's too sunny um, so it was minimal uh, investment to figure out that it's not something that I wanted to do but the mahogany splendor is a zone eight through nine those of you who are in those zones it's perennial and I'm jealous of that We've got an artichoke called Imperial Star. I did artichokes year before last. I got big, beautiful. I did just a, what's the kind? Green Globe, I think, maybe. I got beautiful artichokes off of it. I even let some of them flower so that we could save them and dry them, and I've got those in the studio. Um, again, really easy to start from seed. You do have to watch for aphids on these. The aphids do like these plants, so um, that's something to note, but I will be starting these, let's see. They're a, zone, they're a zone seven through 10, so they're almost able to, like maybe if we mulch them up this next year, they'll do it. But we sow these eight to 12 weeks before our last spring frost date. So this will be one we probably start in like end of January, beginning of February. We've got a couple of different zinnias here. We've got creamy yellow giant dahlia. I had these this year and loved them. If you've never tried that variety, creamy yellow giant dahlia. 
They're huge, 40 to 50 inches tall. I planted them right in front of our maize garden. It's kind of like a flower wall, along with some other varieties, but this was a real standout to me. I loved the color. They kind of had a, they had a Dahlia look to them. Um, just so easy to grow and so, so gorgeous. I actually ordered, like there's a lot. There's a lot of seeds in that packet. Then we have, is it Benaries or Benaries? I don't know, Giant Scarlet. So I wanted some red out there, 40 to 50 inches. These also have nice, great big blooms on them. And I like to have pops of red out in the cut flower garden, not in my normal flower beds, but out in the cut flower garden. I find that I am drawn to it and I really like to use it in arrangements. Again, kind of going along with that kind of fall vibe that I like out there. We've got Sahara Rudbeckia. This was my favorite Rudbeckia I have ever started from seed. I had more success with it last year before last than I did this past growing season. So I'm hoping that I can like pay a little bit more attention. Sometimes I get so many things going that a few things just slip through the cracks and that's just how it goes. Um, but these have a, a lot of different colors in this one plant plus a lot of different flower shapes. Some are really fluffy and some are more single and I just really enjoyed this flower and they last forever in a vase. Does it say how long in here? You harvest them before they're completely open, it says. It doesn't give a, a timeline, but I just cut some uh, Rudbeckia in the greenhouse. I just have them in containers. They're still blooming in there. I cut some about two weeks ago, and just now, they're start, like I just noticed this morning, or was it last night? I noticed they were starting to show a little bit of um, deterioration, but if you get two weeks out of a flower like that, that's awesome. We've got some Dusty Miller. This is called New Look. Uh, 8 to 18 inches tall and I'm not growing this one for cutting as much as I maybe want to try just growing it in containers and in the landscape. Uh, this one has how many seeds? I've got 50 seeds. I think I started with the smallest amount just so I could try it out. But this is one that we sow 8 to 10 weeks before our last frost, so another early one. But they've got such beautiful icy blue leaves. Um, it's a really fun look to have in flower beds and in containers. We've got a couple of different Cosmos. We have a uh, Xenia, Xenia, which color is that? I can't remember. Oh, well, we'll have it up on the screen. Cosmos are super easy to direct seed or start in trays. Um, they do great in full sun and they last all season looking awesome. Just keep cutting the blooms and they keep on, keep on growing. And then we have Cupcakes Blush, which is a beautiful, like delicate pink colored Cosmo. I just love them. And a few sweet peas. So we've got uh, Spencer Ice Cream and Blue Ripple. And these are ones, last year I started a few in containers and then I was gonna try direct sowing them in the ground and I don't think I ever got around to the direct sowing part of that project. Um, so I ended up just planting the ones that did come up in the greenhouse out in the garden. Uh, and I think I kinda wanna try, it does say transplant is recommended. So four to five weeks before planting out, um, if we direct seed you wanna sow six weeks before your last frost. So maybe I was past the point of being able to do that. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to put that on the calendar. That's the thing. And the nice part about how I've got my spreadsheet set up, uh, I do put when to start things in there and I've got them all color coded. So I know like this weekend or this in this window of time, I need to start all of these varieties of seed um, and so on and so forth. So it serves as kind of reminders. Uh, we've got a pumpkin. <laughs> I think I only ordered one like actual vegetable, everything's flowers except for this one. Uh, this is Igor, I, Igor is how you say it, or Igor? How, how come I can't remember how to say that? I just looked it up, it's Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? It produces 25 to 35 pound pumpkins that are just like the perfect jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin. And now the, the kids are really into that and want to carve. I mean, that's kind of what we focused on this year. So I thought that this would be a fun one to try growing. Uh, we've got an Echinops uh, rich, Retro. So this one is a perennial zones three through eight and they produce like one to three inch size globes that as they mature, they turn into this beautiful kind of steel blue color. So you can use them in flower arrangements and dried flower arrangements. Um, and they like very dry kind of crummy conditions which I can give them very easily here uh, so I'm very excited about this one I don't know that I'm actually gonna pop this one in the cut flower garden this one might be in a big drift in a flower bed do need to wear gloves like some good sturdy gloves to work in this plant because a globe thistle they're they're pretty pokey uh, but they are absolutely gorgeous worth growing then I've got some bronze queen at Nicotiana they grow really well for us here they self seed I planted peach screamer out in the cut flower garden year before last and it came back up beautifully this year they are an aphid 
a tractor. In fact, a lot of times I don't even cut my Nicotiana. I just let it be the aphid host plant so that the aphids leave everything else alone. So long as I have things like, let's see, there's four I can think of. Nicotiana, Brussels sprouts, artichokes, and calendula. If you have any of those four plants out in your garden, they will attract the aphids and leave, like my broccoli was squeaky clean this year. Every, all of my uh, broccoli cauliflower cabbage, there are no aphids on them anywhere. And I had calendula and things planted near them at Nicotiana. So anyway, this is a really pretty color. I would like to be able to use it for um, harvesting. We'll see how that goes, but it grows like two to three feet tall. So it's not enormous. The peach screamer is taller, almost as tall as I am. I've got a new variety called Grace Shell Pink Clarkia. Um, this one, I don't have a tremendous amount of experience with this variety or this type of flower, but this one is so pretty. The outer part of the flowers, and they're kind of satiny, I guess, but they, they're white on the outer part, and then as you get further down into the flower, they're more of a light shell pink. Um, they almost have an Alstroemeria vibe, like they kind of look a little bit tropical, and they have upward-facing blooms, which I don't know if that's atypical of, this, of Clarkias in general, but um, this one grows upwards of two feet. I'm really excited to see what this one does. Now, I wanna see like what the window is to cut these. It doesn't really say that, but it does say to start them inside four weeks before planting out. Uh, and you and the seedlings are best grown at 60 to 65 degrees. Uh, if they exceed 75, high temperatures during plant development can cause weak spindly stems. So maybe they're more of a cold season loving plant. I don't know. Anyway, such pretty flowers. And the last one is a didiscus called Lacy Pink. Um, this one I'm excited for you direct sow this one because it doesn't like its roots to be disturbed So you do that right after like when the soil can be worked um, And you can get upwards of two months of flowers from one of these plants and you can successively sow them So sow them every two to three weeks from spring all the way through like probably mid part of summer And that way you'll have a fresh crop throughout the season But they have a very delicate pink color and their blooms are usually I think like two two and a half inches wide and they do have a light scent And I guess it's a very clean kind of crisp scent um, it's not something that's going to overpower, but it's just, it looks like a beautiful filler flower and something to accent more kind of like wildflower looking bouquets. I'm, I'm excited about it. All right, guys. So those are the seeds that I had come this last time. I don't remember when we did the last uh, seed unboxing, but I do have a bunch of new ones over here too, just from earlier on that I need to add into my inventory. So what I'm going to do, let me get my computer out. We'll go over um, the tubs I use as well as the spreadsheet. And then I'm going to launch into this mess. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, this is what I like to store my seeds in. I like that they're clear. Uh, they're just about the right size. They fit onto shelves really easily. And I like that the lid locks on uh, so that nothing falls out. These I pick up at Staples. They are called a six and a half liter CD DVD box. Holds up to 36 CDs, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's a CD DVD box for $14.99, I think. Uh, I've already got three of them going. And what I do is today I'm going to be breaking them up even further, but like for a while there, I just had uh, vegetables and then herbs and I just make like a little cardboard divider. So the first one says vegetables on it. And then this one says herbs and it sticks up a little bit higher than the seeds. And then I just go alphabetically and put my stuff in. Uh, now I have like a specific box just for pumpkins and squash because I have so many varieties of those. Uh, so we'll see how it all works out but I have like a Sharpie and some cardboard out here. Um, anyway, this just for me, I can scale my seed stash really easily. Like if, you know, the vegetables get a little bit more, I just pop the herbs out, put them somewhere else in another box and let, you know, the vegetables have more space um, to fill up this box. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to source seed. You can probably look up all kinds of different ways. This one works the best for my purposes. I think everybody has a different system that works good for them. So anyway. Uh, let me get my spreadsheet up. So I use Google Sheets. It's just like Excel. It's just a spreadsheet where you can, you know, manipulate it based on what your inventory is really easily. The title is seed inventory followed by a date. And that date indicates the last time I updated the inventory, which in my case was December 25th of 21. Oh yeah, because I got seeds on Christmas. So that evening I must have come home and put the, it was pumpkin seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds in my inventory, but I haven't inventoried since that day. Oh my goodness. So it is time. The first page in this sheet is titled veggies and herbs. So you can see up top here, I've got the herbs and then I've got the type of herb. Uh, these are the columns, the variety of that herb, uh, the quantity that I have on hand and when to plant. Uh, then I've got right below that a section called vegetables. And again, they're all 
organized alphabetically. So we've got, you know, artichoke, asparagus, arugula, beet, beans, broccoli, cabbage, so on and so forth. As we cruise down, you can see that they're all broken up uh, based on variety and quantity. I do not have any information on when to start these from seed. I typically, on the vegetables, I kind of know just off the top of my head, so I didn't need to add that in. The flowers were a little bit more of a learning curve for me, and once I get to know them a little bit better, I may not need to have them all categorized. So let's head to the second page, which is cut flowers. Starting at the top, the columns are the type of flowers, the variety that I have of that type, the quantity I have on hand, when to plant them, and additional notes. Every year I kind of add and take out information that I don't find necessary, uh, but you can see over there to the right, I've got three different colors. I've got a yellow, which means that it needs to be planted early, like in January. Uh, the next one is a light orange, which means it needs to be started eight to 10 weeks early. Uh, so mid to late February, and then the blue is six to eight weeks early, and then I probably need to add a four to six weeks in there um, at some point. But then if you look over here again on the left-hand side, if we kind of scroll, you can see the different colors there indicating when I need to do things. And it's so nice just at a glance, like when I get to February, I'm thinking, okay, what do I need to be starting right now? Well, anything that's orange or yellow that I haven't started yet, and I can just scroll through and find all those things very easily. Um, and this hasn't been updated super well. So anyway, this is gonna just be uh, a little bit of a chore. Let me show you how I add one in. Okay, let's, let's do the Clark yet because I don't think I have that, that um, type of flower. Oh, I do have Elegant Salmon. I wanna add in Grace Shell Pink, so I'm gonna insert a row above. And then Grace Shell Pink, and I ordered 50 seeds. And we're supposed to start these four weeks before last frost. So let's make a new category for that in terms of uh, when to start it. Let's do these light pink. So I selected those. We're gonna make them light pink. And then we're gonna come up here and add this here, four weeks early. And then we're gonna make this light pink as well. Does that make sense? Should we do one more? Let's do Dacociana. Nicotiana. I think I have a section for that. Yep. Let's add in Bronze Queen. So we're going to add in a row above Bronze Queen. I've got 100 seeds. And then these, I can direct seed, seed these, but they does recommend that I start them five to six weeks early. So this one I would probably put in the blue category. Find the light blue here, and that means six to eight weeks early, so six weeks early. Anyway, see how I can break those down even further into different time categories and such. So I have a lot of work to do. I have to make it through the new stuff we just went through today, plus all the rest of mine. The beauty though, let me just grab one of my tubs here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> If a seed hasn't made it out of one of these boxes, all of these are currently in inventory and I've got the correct amount. It's when I take things out of these tubs, I don't let them go back in unless I've updated my inventory. Hence, all of the random boxes and pots and stuff full of seeds because I used these, which means I don't have as many or I have empty packets in here that I need to take out of the inventory completely. Uh, but all of this stuff, I don't have to mess with. I just have to update the, everything else and then file them into these boxes. There's no way I'm gonna get this all done this afternoon. So anyway, I'm gonna start working. We'll see how far we get. When I'm all done, I'm gonna show you how everything looks and maybe it will make a lot of sense once you see it. Here we go.
I feel like I am seeing double at this point, but everything has a spot. It's organized, everything is in a bin, the bins are even labeled. I'm gonna have to go back through and refine my spreadsheet, which I'll explain in a second, but everything is organized alphabetically there. It's just a matter of putting in all of the information about when to start it and any special notes. And I'm gonna really work on color coding everything a little bit better, but at this point, I'm just happy to have them in tubs. Six tubs. Oh, it's like a beautiful sight. I need to work on taking the other stickers off, not that it really matters, but to make them all look uniform. But we've got annual flowers, A through P, annual flowers, Q through Z, vegetables, and then gourds, pumpkins, and squash get their own bin because I had enough to fill an entire bin. And then we've got perennial flowers, ornamental grasses, herbs, and fruit, and then bulk flowers and bulk vegetables. So just as a little look in here, like the annual flowers Q through Z. It start, I don't really have anything with a Q, but I felt like I couldn't leave the letter out. I started with Rudbeckia here and it ends with Verbena, but anything that has a huge amount like sunflowers, I gave its own category. So this is my sunflower category. Uh, this is my sweet pea category and my zinnia category right here. Uh, so anyway, that's how that goes. And down here in the annual flowers A through P, there's no specific sections. It just starts with agaratum, the floss flower, and ends at uh, kiss me over the garden gate, the polygonum. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, um, so A through P. Anything like the lisianthus right here, they're always in vials, so they're always really thick. I always stick those to the side or anything like one of you guys sent me a huge envelope full of pink poppy seeds. Um, so that actually needs to go in the perennial. My goodness, I moved all the other perennials over. Um, one of you guys sent me some star hibiscus, Texas star and white star. Um, and so if those don't quite fit in the lineup, they go to the side. Let's get into perennial flowers and put these poppies in. So in this one, perennial flowers start here. I don't have all that many, but you can see the poppies right there. Stick that envelope full of poppy seeds right in there. And then we've got our herb section, our ornamental grasses, and fruit and other. I didn't really know what to do with these things because I've got like, one of you guys sent me out Bird of Paradise, which I think would be so fun to try to grow. Look at the seeds, they're really cool looking. Almost like a fishing lure. And then there's papaya, there's rhubarb seeds, and then a bunch of strawberry seeds. So they kind of needed their own category there. I did end up with two baskets full. This is the second of seeds I'm giving away. Um, so friends and family will go through these and see if they want any. It was basically just duplicates of stuff I already had or stuff I already have in the garden like borage. I do not need another borage plant in my garden ever. Um, parsley, I had like three packets in there. So there's a couple packets worked in here tongue tickler and so on and so forth. So anyway, the other box is inside. And then this one right here, the bulk flowers and bulk veg are things that I get out of my parents' garden center, uh, out of the bulk bins. And I use a lot of them like ambrosia corn. So this is the bulk vegetable section. Uh, beans, peas, and corn are typically bulk for me. And then uh, flower bulk. So sunflowers, velvet queens, there's a whole bunch of zinnias, the California giants, the lilliputs, sensation cosmos. Um, so anything that I just get in larger quantities goes in here. And for the spreadsheet, I actually ended up with five, no, one, two, three, four, five, six different tabs at the bottom. I think I started with two. Um, but it makes it much easier to find things and uh, makes things more categorized. The first thing I did was I changed the date at the top um, to 12-7-22, knowing that now my inventory is updated. I know exactly what I have uh, on hand. So I went through and added in my herbs, vegetables. Do you see here that bright yellow? See the broccoli right there? That means I don't have any broccoli seed and I need to, if I want to grow it from seed, I'll need to pick some up. Same with peppers. I have hot peppers, but not a lot of like regular sweet bell peppers. I need regular spinach seed. Next tab is gourd pumpkins and squash. So I have my gourds at the top, then we've got pumpkins, then summer squash and winter squash annual flowers there. And again, I'm gonna go through and really work on my color categorization there. And I'm adding a purple category and that means direct seed. So in the end, everything will have a color assigned to it. So I can just quickly know exactly what I need to do with each one of those seeds. Same with the perennial flower section. I don't think I really have anything except for the poppies because I moved that over from the other tab. That one has a color, but everything will in the end. And then our ornamental grasses is kind of a small tab at the moment. And then fruit and other 
at the end. And this right here is what I use to make labels. This is Erin's Dymo Label Maker. Pretty handy. So it shoots out these things right here. I had to make a couple of different ones because, you know, like my, my uh, organization changed twice. <laughs> right here, uh, but we ended up with all the labels we need. And this is always just such a big job in the fall or winter. I don't know if you guys kind of run into the same thing. Our stash gets just a little bit messy and we need to make some sense of it. Otherwise, uh, seeds just slip, slip through the cracks and we don't end up using them or filtering things out that we could give away that other people could use. Um, like all of these things here, I will use, like seed stays good for quite a long time. And even if I don't have plans to grow like I'm not gonna grow quite as much stock this next year as I did this past year, but I will grow stock for a number of years. Um, so I will use off of these seeds as long as they're stored in a dry spot. I just store them in the studio. They are fine and they don't, I mean, they don't lose very much germination rate every year. It might be a percent or two. Some aren't uh, as long lasting as others. I know when I was down at the garden center, the um, onions, the um, tomatoes and peppers, those three, I wanna say those three didn't uh, hold their germination quite as well as some of the other things did. And I love knowing what I have. Like this past year when I was getting ready to do spring crops, I got all my stuff out. Uh, I was I filmed a video for you guys and I had no spinach seed, but I had no idea because I hadn't updated my inventory for the whole season. I thought I had some. So if I was a little bit more, maybe if I did it twice a year, like maybe in the one of the dog days of summer in July, I can go through and kind of make some sense and it won't take me as long now and once you have a system in place like this is going to make it so much easier i had just found that over the past couple of years with the addition of the cut flower garden in particular it made my speed my seed stash grow exponentially i just grew so much and i didn't have enough tubs to accommodate it so now that i do i should be okay um, going forward i don't imagine because we're not adding more space to the cut flower garden i don't imagine needing a ton more space four seeds. So anyway, that is it for today's video. It actually spanned over the course of two days. I did as much as I could yesterday afternoon. I started kind of in the middle of the afternoon and then I lost light out here and it was getting kind of dim. Um, and then a little bit this afternoon. So anyway, over the course of two days, we got it done. I'm so happy about it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found it interesting at least a little bit. I hope that the seed unboxing, those are always fun. I love to learn about new seeds and talk about new seeds. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.